Hi, this is Gary with Mac Modes Now. On today's episode, let's look at compressing files in OS X. So OS X has a built-in way to create a compressed archive of a single file or groups of files. It compresses it using the zip file format and .zip file extension. Let's take a look. So here I have a bunch of files in my documents folder. And let's say I want to compress one of them. Let's take this info.rtf text file. You see it's 127K. Maybe I want to email it to somebody so I want to compress it so it's a little smaller. I can right click or control click on the file and one of the options I get is compress. So I will select that and very quickly I'll have a info.rtf.zip file and I can see it's only 37K compared to the 127K of the original. The zip format is a standard format so you can zip up some files and send them to people even if they don't have Macs if they're on Windows or Linux. To decompress this file all I need to do is double click it in the finder and it will decompress it and you can see here since there was a name conflict it put a space 2 after it and you can see I now have a copy of the original. Now the compression isn't always that dramatic. For instance here's a JPEG image. I'm going to compress that. And you can see the file I get is only a little smaller than the original. Now let me try it with a video file. Here's an MPEG compressed video file. I'm going to compress that. I'll see here I get a modest amount of compression. So the reason it didn't work so great for the JPEG and the video file is those formats already contain compressed data. MPEG files and JPEG, they're both kinds of compression. So you're compressing something that's already compressed and you're only going to get a little bit more savings out of it. Whereas a text file isn't compressed at all so you get a lot of savings out of compressing that. Now you can also compress multiple files at the same time. So for instance let me select this RTF file and also the JPEG. I'm going to do that by holding the command key down and selecting both of them and then control click just one of the two. You can see both are still selected there and it will say compress two items. And when I do that it doesn't know exactly what it should name it so it names it archive and you get archive.zip and it's a zip file with both of these in there. So I can compress a whole bunch of files into a single zipped archive with this method. Of course you can also compress a whole folder full of documents. Just control click on the folder compress and then you'll get a compressed copy of that entire folder. Now there are a lot of reasons why you may want to compress files. One is if you're trying to send something to somebody say via email or upload it to a server and you find a compressed version it's much smaller and it's going to be easier for you to upload and for them to download. Also sometimes it's easier to gather a lot of files together into a single compressed zip file rather than send somebody a whole bunch of different files. Also if you're completely done with a project, say it's a folder filled with hundreds of files, you may want to compress it. This makes it a single file on your drive, may save a little bit of space, kind of gets it out of the way and also it removes it from your searches. So if you're searching for something you're not going to get all these files from a project that you know you're not going to need anymore. Now of course there are many programs you can get that allow you to have more control over compression. They allow you to choose different formats and different settings for those formats. But for basic needs using the simple built-in OS X compression can be very useful. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.